Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gitty Marie. My actual name, not Mary. Sort of facing out my username. I don't know how this sounds yet, but just be warned. It's happening. It has been requested so many times that we talk about Timu on this channel, and rightfully so. I've talked about Timu in greenwashing videos, I've mentioned it in the Shein video, but I think it's time that we dedicate an actual video to talking about this. Timu launched in 2022 and it's taken the world by storm. It's basically impossible to go online without seeing a Timu ad. It's basically impossible to watch one of my videos without a Timu ad popping up, and I know the irony is. They have been incredibly effective and aggressive in their marketing and it's been working. They have utilized influencer partnerships, they have also asked me several times to collaborate with them and once again the irony, amazing. They also had ads at the recent, not so recent anymore, but at this year's Super Bowl. And their slogan is shop like a billionaire, which we can make a video about in and of itself because that's so tragic. But I will refrain. We have bigger issues than just a really, really shitty slogan. But we will get back to it shortly. The thing is, if you can think it, you can buy it on Timu, which makes it the holy place of crap. Essentially, Timu is problematic for all the same reasons that Shein is problematic, Wish, etc. But it's becoming worse. Timu exceeded Shein in market share less than a year after it launched. It is very explosive, very aggressive, overconsumption at another level. And the reason why is primarily the very large selection and the very cheap prices. They are literally giving things away for free and offering crazy discounts as well. And as a result, Timu was the most downloaded app in App Store four months after it launched. In the US alone, there are over 100 million Timu users, and in Europe, it's about 50 million. That is a scary amount of people. The reason why products on Timu are so cheap is because A, they are sold directly from manufacturers, so all of the middlemen that usually drive up prices aren't present there. And B, because the prices are kept artificially down to encourage overconsumption and to place themselves as a valuable player on the market. And it's working. But now, if you look at the prices of the stuff that Timu is selling, there is no way that you can obtain that product for that price. There's no way you can gather the materials. There's no way you can extract materials for the packaging or for the product itself. There's no way that you can pay wages for people that produce, assemble and redistribute these products. The price does not add up. And if you were guessing that then maybe someone in that supply chain isn't getting paid, you would be right. This Wired article shares how manufacturers that are working with Timu are being pressured to lower their prices and are forced to work for free if they want to compete with the current market that Timu is creating. And Timu is becoming such a big player so incredibly quickly that many of these manufacturers don't have a choice. But does it mean that it's the exact same product that you get in other stores that you can buy in Timu just incredibly cheaper? Sometimes, but the prices aren't higher in other stores just for the heck of it. Of course, there are aspects of pricing that reflect a markup that just literally lines the pockets of CEOs. But for the most part, there's also a part of the price that reflects the work, work that Timu is not willing to pay for. Tons of the products on Timu are also cheaper versions or copies of other more expensive products, but the products on Timu have no guarantee and shorter lifespans and are not made to last. Which means that you'll be back there buying products again soon. But at first glance, it seems great. You get to save a lot of money and you get a lot of product out of it. But there's a little bit more to it than that. And we as consumers should be a tad more critical. I've never seen more weight put into a just a tad bit more critical. According to reports from US lawmakers, there is an extremely high risk that Timu is selling products from third parties that use forced labor in the manufacturing. And we should not be surprised. Shell Bissell also made a brilliant video about Timu where she goes over how the average US order on Timu loses the company $30. But they're doing that because they're so keen on entering the American and European market and make a name for themselves that they're losing millions. But Timu getting more power on the market would be catastrophic because Timu has such low labor standards that Amazon has refused to work with them. Yes, Amazon. Amazon whose employees have died in their distribution centers and Amazon who forced their colleagues to keep working even though some of them died and they think what Timo is doing is unethical. New level of hell. I have made vast amounts of criticisms like this against 
other kinds of stores, Shein, other types of fast fashion retailers, H&M, Zara, Boohoo, both the more extreme places like Timo, Wish and Shein, and the more traditional fast fashion. Whenever I zoom in and focus on a specific company and all their shitty business practices, I get some form of variation of these two comments. But when you criticize this brand, you make it seem like it's okay to buy from this brand and this brand is also bad. So why are we focusing on this brand? Because it validates the purchase purchasing from other brands that are also bad. And I know this company is technically bad, but for this and this reason, my overconsumption of these products are more okay than other people's overconsumption. And I have thoughts. So many companies are shitty. And just because we focus today on one company that's shitty doesn't take away from other companies also being shitty. That's why I've made more than one video. But if there's one takeaway from any of these videos, it should be that stop buying shit. Stop over consuming shit. Stop buying shit you don't need. Stop buying shit that's trending. Stop buying shit that's being hyped up on social media. Stop buying products that solves a problem you never thought that you had, but now that you saw the product, you can sort of see the convenience of having a product that solves that problem that you never thought about before. Essentially, stop buying shit. That's a hot take. Essentially, buying from Timu, Shein, Wish, H&M, Boohoo, Sara, ASOS, it's not a good thing. These companies are shitty, but some companies are still shittier than others. Companies like Shein and Timu produce so much more stuff than conventional fast fashion. And conventional fast anything, incomprehensible amounts more. The business model on sites like Timu or Shein or Wish scans the internet for trends and things people are hyping up, and then they produce the shittiest, cheapest version of what people are talking about online. Which means that they deliberately steal from smaller designers that are going viral on social media. And then just completely butchers everything that they worked for. Love to see it. Girl boss. So I think it's fair to say that I don't recommend people buy from H&M, but shopping at Timu is just a different leak. It's just a different scale of awful. Next up, and I might be unpopular for saying this, but I think there's something to be said about the Western perspective and how we value our own amusement and convenience. The urgency and importance with which we tackle and perceive our well-being is so delusional. It's incredibly hard to criticize people's need and demand for convenience because as soon as a product in some way, shape or form, even, even on a microscopic scale, but if it makes someone's life easier, it becomes a lot harder to criticize. But we need more perspective than that. We need to see beyond our own convenience and amusement. It seems like over the course of two decades, consumers have grown rapidly accustomed to getting things with a certain pace at a certain time frame within a certain framework, within a certain price point, and with a certain speed. We want things as cheaply and quickly as possible, and that comes with a massive price. There's really no excuse for this level of consumerism, and it isn't a born right to be able to buy trinkets and gadgets. And I think it's downright alarming how quickly we dismiss any critique of it. And it's not because we don't know how these products are made. I actually think it's a huge disservice to blame ignorance for the rising popularity of these platforms. I really sincerely doubt that most consumers don't know that these products are produced in China by people living and working under awful conditions. And I say that because because sweatshops have been punchlines in comedy and TV shows. It's often mentioned on the news, it's brought up in politics, and it isn't unheard of to hear people tell jokes about how their stuff came from child labor in China. We know, we just don't care. Or we tell ourselves that at least they have jobs to excuse the exploitation. But we really just want free stuff without thinking too much about where it came from. One of the reasons why Timo is so popular is because it gamifies your shopping experience. You can play to win discounts and cheap offers and even freebies, and that increases the sentiment for people to stay on the platform. And it's not like people that buy from Timu have absolutely no issues at all. With inflation, with the increased cost of living, with an economic crisis, with actual war, our mental health, our economic situation and our general well-being, Timu exploits that situation to sell us stuff we don't need. And we buy into it because it makes us feel good. 
understandably so it gives us a feeling of being able or having the opportunity to buy stuff especially so unnecessary stuff it gives us this feeling of wealth and luxury and opulence which takes our minds off of our current economic situation for a while in that sense they fully deliver on the experience of shopping like a billionaire although i do doubt that actual billionaires shop on timu but it gives the experience of being able to buy tons of stuff that you don't need just for fun it gives everyone the experience of shopping for leisure but buying cheap stuff we don't need to feel like we are in financial control is kind of like peeing to keep yourself warm in a snowstorm. And I think it's very important to be clear here, but low-income people is not the target demographic for Timu, for Shein, for any of these places. If the primary target, if the majority of people that shopped on Timu were people that couldn't afford to shop anywhere else, the platform wouldn't have been valued at $100 billion within its first year. Sustainable Fashion Forum recently shared some information about the average shopper on Shein, and I haven't been able to find similar statistics for the average shopper on Timu, but because the business models are so similar i think there is a high probability that the target audience is similar as well so hear this out the average shopper on shein is a 35 year old woman with an annual income of sixty-five thousand dollars, who spends an average of 100 dollars every month on clothes that is not low income that is not people that are forced to only buy from shein because they can't afford to buy things anywhere else that is not poor people and i think it borders on tone deaf to blame poor people and low income communities for the rise and popularity of platforms like this because it's the vast middle class that has the opportunity to buy elsewhere that has the opportunity to buy better stuff that just choose not to because they value quantity over quality and in my opinion it's okay to ask this demographic to get a clue like they are the problem if you have the opportunity to shop elsewhere and you choose to buy cheap shit just for fun on the internet you are the problem and i get so frustrated because i feel like it's a basic human premise to care about your surroundings to care about other people and for some consumers to just disregard other people's well-being in favor of their own convenience or amusement baffles me baffles me I've been looking forward to this question all day and it's what is Timo doing in terms of sustainability? No one asked. And I very seriously doubt that sustainability is any kind of determining factor when it comes to the people that buy stuff on Timu, but they still have a little folder like every single other fucking website today stating what they do for the planet. Let's look at that together. So it seems like Timu is a certified tree planter by the organization Trees for the Future. They have shared their certificate of support on their website and it all sounds very fancy with certifying processes until you realize that it means that they bought sprouts. There isn't actually a certifying process here at all. They bought sprouts. Tree planting operations is more often than not simply just greenwashing. I have made a video about carbon offsetting and tree planting schemes and I'll leave those down below if you want to check them out further. But it's greenwashing. Especially so when the company that are going sort of like, hey look at our sustainability and then they plant a tree somewhere in the world and that's the only thing that they have done. That is the only thing available, that is the only part of their communication that involves sustainability is this tree planting operation. You you have a garden it's a fun cute project it's not a sustainability initiative it is simply laughable it is tragic these companies and this is not just timu so many other think we're idiots they literally think we're idiots these tree planting operations are often charities so all the work all the money that a company invests as a charity in this organization can be used as a tax write-off not that timu has paid any tax in the us for instance at any point in time but it's just very important that we are critical as consumers about this tree planting operations and carbon offsetting of any kind also means that that you are outsourcing the sustainability initiative to someone else somewhere else in the world it means that you aren't doing anything in your own supply chain and there's no way that trees can compensate for the production and extraction of natural materials for your unnecessary products it doesn't add up it doesn't make sense the math is not mathing it's bullshit and one thing we also have to be skeptical of here is whenever a company is talking about all the trees that they're planting there should be some questions there should be questions like what trees where they planted are the native to the environment they're being planted in or do people need to be hired to take care of them do you plan to take care of them or do you plan on planting small sprouts and leaving them to be they need to grow for 20 30 years before we see any actual positive impact 
Mm. What seems especially bold on their sustainability page here is that they are advertising how much carbon has been captured, 313 metric tons of CO2 captured past tense. That means that that is the CO2 that has been captured so far. That is at least how most people would read it. But when you read the tiny text underneath, it says that it's potentially what could be captured during the course of 20 years. It hasn't even been captured yet. They haven't done anything yet, but potentially 20 years, they will have done something. This is laughable. But there isn't any ethical consumption under capitalism anyway. At least that seems to be the main response from influencers that are advertising Timu or Shein on social media when receiving backlash from it. The idea is here that all kinds of capitalism is bad anyway, and the people that are criticizing the influencers or anyone talking about shitty companies that hate all of us is that, well, you have an iPhone, you're filming this on a Sony camera, you had to buy socks last week. That's the same as mindless overconsuming every single week. So I try to be better. Better doesn't exist. So I'm just here to say that this statement, the no ethical consumption under capitalism is bullshit. And I don't know how it got to be this get out of jail free card for influencers that have been paid thousands of dollars to promote this platform to people and lie and try to convince us that they are shopping on Timu all the time. Meanwhile, it's probably very likely that they wouldn't have even looked at the platform if they hadn't been paid to say that. And this response, this quote that people keep citing, isn't the famous quote. It's from an old Tumblr blog, yet it's cited like this profound truth. Just because something sounds cool and edgy in an Instagram caption, Jessica, doesn't make it true. It's true that it's basically impossible to be a perfect ethical consumer. Just existing in the world has an impact, but giving a fuck is always a billion times better they're not giving a fuck, no matter how perfect or imperfect the result is. And we should care. That is what my entire platform and work is about. It's the fact that it's important to care. And frankly, I think we should be furious. We should be furious at the companies and we should be furious with influencers that have massive platforms, massive incomes, and are role models to millions of people who without an ounce of critical thinking agree to lie to their followers. Loki, unfollow any influencer or content creator that has a Timu or Shein sponsorship straight to landfill throw them away there's nothing worth recycling we need to demand more we need to demand better we need to demand better more strict frameworks for businesses like this so they can't exploit people and that's not only the responsibility of the consumers it also falls in the political sector but it starts with how we spend our money. It starts with us supporting these companies. It's 2024 and it's apparently a hot take to tell people to not buy shit they don't need. Anyway, we live in hell. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you got as fired up as I did, leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. I really appreciate you watching this video. If this gave you just an ounce of motivation or inspiration to act differently, to buy different things or to reduce any kind of consumption, any kind of purchases you're making in the future, that's a success. Leave me a comment down below and comment which company I should talk about next. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.